Hi students, now we are going to explain Maxwell's equations in the integral form. So there are four equations to be discussed. The first equation is called Gauss law in electrostatics. The second equation is actually given in some book. It does not have any name. But in some other books it is given some name like Gauss law in magnetism. Okay. And the third one is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. And the fourth one is Ampere's Maxwell's combined law. Okay. So first we will discuss Gauss law in electrostatics. In the first chapter electrostatics we have studied the relationship between the total electric flux and the net charge in a Gaussian surface. So, Gauss law in electrostatics is given by closed integral E dot dA is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the total or net charge enclosed. This is the actual Gauss law in electrostatics. So, the left hand side is electric field. Okay. The right hand side is what uh, the net charge enclosed. So, this Gauss law relates the net electric flux of the electric field with the net charge enclosed inside a closed surface called the Gaussian surface. And uh, since uh, this right hand side is uh, non zero, okay, it is a non zero form. That is why the electric field E, okay. It does not, electric field E does not form a closed continuous loop. Does not form a closed loop. What do you mean by this? It means that, it means that individual, individual charges, understand? So, isolated charges, isolated charges exist. So we have studied you now, if you take a positive charge, if you take a positive charge or a negative charge, separate charges are available, separate charges are available and the direction of the electric field lines, you know, it is like this, outwards for a positive charge and it is inward for a negative charge like this. That means what? These electric lines uh, do not uh, form a closed loop. They do not form a closed loop. So the meaning of that is uh, isolated positive and negative charges can exist. So what are the other points related to the Gauss line electrostatics? No. If you take discrete charges, individual charges uh, like uh, one positive charge or one negative charge. Then also Gauss law in electrostatics is true. Or if you take a straight wire, charged wire like this, this charged wire is considered to be a continuous distribution of charges. So Gauss law is true for a continuous distribution of charges like a parallel plate capacitor or a infinite long straight wire. Okay. Now we come to the second equation namely Gauss law in magnetism. Sometimes uh, it is mentioned that it has no name also I said that. So what does this uh, equation know? If you take the line integral okay, or closed integral uh, B dot dA. In electrostatics we took uh, the closed integral E dot dA electric field and here magnetic field I am considering. B is the magnetic field and it is uh, equal to 0. See on the right hand side it is 0. When the right hand side was not equal to 0, what we said? It means uh, the electric field E does not form closed loop. Now we have got what? Uh, the right hand side is equal to 0. What does this mean? The magnetic lines of force uh, or uh, the magnetic field uh, forms a closed loop. It forms a closed continuous or a closed loop. That means what the, the magnetic lines of force start from one point and end at the same point. That is why if you take B dot DL uh, around a closed path uh, and add uh, the net uh, product will be equal to what uh, zero. What does this mean again? Here a individual isolated monopole does not exist. 
you cannot have only a north pole you cannot also have only a south pole so here isolated okay isolated monopole monopole does not exist that is the idea understand we have to learn from this so this is a equation number 1 gauss law in electrostatics this is equation number 2 gauss law in magnetism and the third one is faraday's law of electromagnetic induction already in the previous chapters we have studied that closed integral e okay closed integral e dot dl closed integral e dot dl is equal to minus of d phi by dt d phi this is a suffix b means magnetic flux phi b means magnetic flux so d phi by dt means it is the rate of change of magnetic flux left side is electric field e right side is a magnetic flux phi b so here uh, you see that uh, the electric field and the rate of change of a magnetic flux or magnetic field are related this very clearly indicates that uh, variations in the magnetic field are varying magnetic field so vari variations in the magnetic field or varying magnetic field okay produces an electric field it produces an electric field so this is the point uh, we have to write in the exam so this can be considered as equation 3 and finally we come to the ampere maxwell's combined law understand now ampere's circuit law was modified by maxwell and that is what closed integral okay b dot dl is now equal to mu naught times the total current i total and that is equal to mu naught times the sum of the conduction current and the displacement current what is displacement current we have already studied is it not the displacement current id is equal to dq by dt and that is equal to d by dt of epsilon naught times phi e understand so this is equal to epsilon naught times d phi e by dt so what is phi suffix e it is electric flux it is electric flux so d phi by dt is what uh, the rate of change of electric flux okay so this is uh, now equal to so closed uh, integral uh, b dot dl is now equal to mu naught times ic conduction current plus uh, mu naught times id instead of id i am going to substitute epsilon naught okay epsilon naught into d phi by dt this is the actual equation but in some books uh, one more step ahead also they have given what is that is uh, so this is also equal to mu naught into conduction current ic plus mu naught into epsilon naught into d phi e by dt can be written as d by dt of integral phi is what e dot da understand e dot da this phi e is nothing but closed integral e dot da and this is now equation 4 so what are the four equations called as maxwell's equations in integral form okay first equation is called by the name gauss law in electrostatics and that is a closed integral e dot da is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times q enclosed that is not equal to 0 second equation is gauss law in magnetism what is it closed integral b dot da is equal to 0 so this clearly shows no individual north pole can exist no individual south pole can exist and the third law is faraday's law of electromagnetic induction 
So, integral e dot dl is equal to minus d5 by dt. This minus has come from a consequence of Lenz's law. Understand? You must know that. So, the variations in magnetic field will produce an electric field. Okay, children. Now, the fourth one is what? Combination of Ampere and Maxwell's equation. The modified form of Ampere circuital law only is called by the name Ampere Maxwell's law. So, according to him, the closed integral B dot DL is equal to mu0 times I total. That is equal to mu0 times IC plus ID, where IC is called conduction current and ID is called the displacement current. So, very clearly this equation indicates that magnetic field can be produced by both conduction current as well as displacement current. So, I can extend up to this equation 4. Yes, dear students, you must have understood up to this. Okay, fine, see you.